Now, South Sudan's warring rivals have been in peace talks aimed at trying to end 20 months of civil war. President Salva Kiir and Rebel Chief, uh, Rebel Chief Rick Machar met alongside regional presidents in Ethiopia. They're under intense diplomatic pressure to sign a deal by a deadline to avoid possible sanctions. Now, I'm joined by Mawan Murtat, a South Sudan political analyst. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Do you think it's actually possible that there will be a deal reached? Uh, it's questionable now because the president himself has not actually signed it. It's only been signed by Rek Machar and represented by another group called the G10, former detainees. Uh, but the president himself has not uh, signed. And the last thing we've heard that he's been given 15 days mm. uh, to consider it. So he's got reservations. He's happy about the deal. But he, they said they, had, uh, they needed time. You know, even if there is an agreement reached here, you know, there have been at least seven ceasefire agreements previously, but that didn't do anything. So the president said he would prefer a good agreement than signing anything. Are they on the path, the right path, to signing a, an agreement that both sides that actually be happy with? No, it's very difficult, uh, basically. I mean, the gap between the two was huge. And we are very surprised, actually, that anything has been signed. But, uh, yeah, I would think there is a slight difference between this agreement or what is expected to come out of this agreement and the previous agreements, mm. which is this one. It's a comprehensive agreement that uh, basically not just about the ceasefire, but about power sharing, coming together, and the rebels actually coming back to the capital, Juba, to, to, uh, to join the government. So that's why we think that it's, it's different in nature and it can hold. Now, you know, the economy of South Sudan is one of the, the world's worst and underdeveloped, according to statistics. Aren't sanctions going to impact even further, not just on the economy, but what about those people who are already suffering? That's a big question. There have been a lot of oppo opposition against the idea of sanctions. But the justification by the United Nations and, people, and, and other people who are pushing for the, for the sanctions is that they will be targeted to, in, against individuals like senior political leaders and, and, and military commanders. And therefore, they are claiming that it's not going to affect uh, the ordinary people. But that's actually questionable. Yeah. Now, I mean, it is the youngest country in the world, yet four years into it, thousands of people have been killed, two million displaced. Tell us about the situation on the ground. Uh, it's desperate. Uh, it's quietened down compared to the situation before. But the economy itself is not performing. It's been in, affected by the war. One of the oil um, uh, wells has been shut down. So that's really affected the economy. Also, the slide in the oil prices has also affected the country. So even the areas that are not affected directly by the war or the violence are suffering because of trade and food stuff and med medicines and all the stuff they need. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just not getting there uh, easily. So it is, it is a grim situation. That's why this peace is really needed. Now, the one thing that many people at home might be asking if they don't know this uh, situation properly and the backstory is why should a government who was elected officially have to negotiate for transitional power with a rebel leader? Just tell us about that. Well, there is a feeling of, uh, of, of injustice in South Sudan, as I speak to you, regarding the way the inter international community is playing and is pushing for this peace because they don't see that there is that they are being actually even handed. And they think that there is, uh, uh, you know, foul play. Also, there is a history to this. This particular rebel leader had actually uh, rebelled against the previous liberation war that actually end led to the independence of South Sudan. And out of the 20 years of liberation war, he was actually fighting against the South Sudanese rebels, the, the current leaders yeah. of the SPLM, allying with Khartoum. So because of just check at history, there is uh, a lot of bitterness. And people are hesitating, really. Should we really agree again? Because three years down the line, we might find ourselves exactly in the same place again. So if you look at people on the ground, who do you think they would rather have as president? At the moment, obviously, I mean, the, the, the rebel leader has no chance of winning. But uh, there is an element to this, it's an ethnic element to this. For his supporters, he is important, although mm. they are a minority uh, compared to the rest of the country. All right, thanks very much. Uh, Mawan Morchat, a South Sudan political analyst. We appreciate your time.